Welcome back to Finnegan's Farm, welcome back to the YouTube channel and welcome back to Workshop Wednesday. My name is Paul and this is our team. Hello, I'm Mick and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Caelan Russell and I'm the mechanic. Hello, I'm Sean and I'm the patent mechanic. Hello, my name is Marco, I love the world. This is Bruce, this is Blake, them two best students. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos and comment if you want and we will get back to you. In for repair today we have our John Deere 7810, we also have the Scanstone bed tail on Ridger. JCB 4220 is in once more, and yes, we have Marco changing blades on the Mashio Tiller. But before we get started, little Bertha show how that Cahal actually missed last week, and it's to uh, yeah, big fellows of Finnegan's Farm here in Clay and County Gildare, Tillage and Padeja Growers, and it's to Brian and David Martin. So on your next video, if you could wish David a happy night, Bertha, on Saturday, the 27th of May, he will be delighted. So happy Bertha, David. Now we're going to head over to Caleb. So what are you doing there? Well, it seems to be a fairly common team, John Deere's and Walter Lakes. They're just never ending. So it's just not fast tricks on their own as no, well, it's no. uh, his John Deere's as well. I know, he's right to so do it. So we're just ready to go, and next to a sudden, we've just seen some little bit of a leak underneath it here. I think yeah. it's a clean floor. Yeah, <clears throat> and we reckon it is... It's this single hose, which... Yeah, I don't know, is it for something on the heat or the cab, maybe? I so, so, yeah. know, so oh, you usually straight off the wall. That there, Joe. I heat your pipe and you're, yeah, sure you have your, no, sorry, that's not it, but I need to run over the past side of that. Going back into the block on the fire side. Yeah. And what's down, there's a jubi clip on it down yeah, here at the bottom. Yeah, so that push in fitting, it had broke off the end of it, but it actually, you can buy the piece that has the push in, push which in. is into the radiator. Yeah. I'm fairly sure that's what I was. I remember when we first got the tractor and it was first day out, that had broke off. Yeah, and uh, no ju juby clip, just not tight. But you like that with juby clips and rubber. You Soften can. up over time. Yeah. So, yeah. so it's just important to have, have that, especially when it's in the row in the bed tiller, there's because no, no more important there's, 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 uh, it needs to be cooled because you're not travelling at any great speed. And yeah, it's all down to the it's all down to the cooling system, system on it. But uh, yeah, and just to get that started, out, hopefully it's a quick fix. Yeah, we'll pressure test it now. We'd say. Yeah. So we have a forty-two twenty in bonnet up. Never a great sign, but this time it actually isn't too bad. So it's not. No, no, sorry. You're talking to me, Mick, there. What's yeah. going on here? <laughs> We're on camera here. Mick is just somewhere else in another world here. Another world. So anyway, we have, we, have, we, have, we have Mick back again. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, Mick, so we'll go again. Will we? We went over to. Oh, look at Caleb oh. Russell. Look at Caleb Russell there. We were, oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. On the phone. He, he yeah. loves that. <laughs> on the phone, you see, you're not getting nothing done on the phone, not at Marco. Anyway, we went over to Riverside. John was driving this the night before and it stopped, he wouldn't drive him. Yeah. We went over and went. So what? Went when to did start and it did drive actually. It started the first time when we tried it. And it we put there was the no drive to it? No. No, it drove when we went to try the following morning. Yeah. But presumably sitting overnight, the batteries came back up a wee bit. But anyway, we put a meter on the battery and we were 10.4 volts. Actually, it was on the screen. Caleb has it, had it yeah. up on the screen. And it went down, and when I checked the alternator, the trigger wire here on the back, which, which is broken up here and just dangling around. So we replaced it. The wire was a bit hard, or we replaced it back to somewhere there. I can't remember exactly where. And, and put, the, it, put the, it on. The purpose of that wire makes That's your trigger wire to energize the magnetic field in your alternator, which gives you your output. Okay. All right? And that's controlled. Like the, if it needs more output, it increases and allows more. That's yeah. the signal wire down to it to tell it to go charge. But anyway, put it on, start it up, still no charge. Anyway, we said, right, let's see if we can get it home. We took a chance, drove it home, parked it up here, put the battery on charge, pulled the alternator off, um, sent that in to uh, Navin Auto Electric. Yeah. And in fairness to Sean, he tested it there and down for Mars. Yeah. Right? He, and he rang me, said, nothing wrong with it, which I half expected. And the, while he was away, the bracket was broken here, we repaired that and welded it up. Anyway, I hooked it all up again. Sorry, when I was testing this wire while it was away, I was only getting four volts. And before I went away, I put it on and the voltage was disappearing down to zero. And this was throwing me. And I wasn't, I was feeling maybe this one was ECU control. Anyway, put it back together. Battery fully charged, started up, and straight away on the dash, 14.5 volts. So you're saying because I'm the batteries uh, dropped down that it wasn't The ECU, ECU switched off. I presumably to limit consumption, protecting circuits. Yeah. Well, like we, I've got caught out with this before with the John Deere's on the lights and that and the combines. And the, they've no fuses. The computer's controlling the, fu the lights. And yeah. if you can't meter them. You just have to replace with the light to see. 
Right. Well, we, we'll take that holiday along. That's oh, yeah. Is. And if anyone has any different opinion now, or maybe a comment on Fire it up. what else, that here. Pull, it up, pull it up there so we can... Uh, any help is always welcome. Yeah, you never said it. But anyway, she's back yep. on the road again, uh, charged up. And yeah, uh, fully charged on the battery. Now, we'll build an oil in the back when we we'll get to there. No, I don't know, we'll see. Right. Okay. We'll get the bonnet back down. Any of that's the main thing, isn't it? Oh, yeah. Yeah, ready for all. Yeah, so... Um, what, <laughs> what's the laugh, Caleb? <laughs> well, it might look like the leak is actually fixed, even though there's more water. Uh, there's more there. water around here than... The actual, there's only a drop <laughs> here earlier. Yeah, and, and now we've... And done, now we have... Uh, we're, we're showered. Yeah, so uh, the pressure tester is fantastic. Oh, yeah. It held this pressure yeah. for a while, and uh, I was a bit distracted by a phone call, and I, there's a button to release it, held it for 10 seconds. I just took it off and I sent a jet probably six foot into the air on top of the tractor, but and and it was, she's okay. She, it's okay. She, it's okay. Or she um, okay at the phone call? <laughs> <laughs> she's not doing, doing too bad. <laughs> it's fairly but, hot in here. Um, and well, it's fairly hot outside, I should say, but we have our fans working in the workshop and they're a fantastic job, especially because yeah. might dry you off then along yeah. with that. With you the need a bit of drying now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, Marco is here at his favourite pastime, changing <laughs> blades on a Rojo Vejo. My God, we have changed so many blades this year, haven't we? Oh, oh my goodness. So we have, on the go, we have four Rojo Vejos going, have we? Yeah, four. Four or five Rojo Vejos going at the minute, along with some two tillers, and we seem to be constantly changing blades. Now, mm. they do take a lot of time, Marco was very quick at them, but I'd say you're sick of them at this stage, are you? Oh, yeah. yeah. And if, you see <laughs> yes. the, if you see the skip out there, it's absolutely full of old blades, but it's just been that type of year where the ground has got so hard now and that we need to give it an extra tilling. So where we were getting away with one tilling maybe with the row of airs, in places we're actually giving it three tillings because it's got so dry and so hard, which means that there is an awful lot of wear um, and the row of air blades are not lasting as long as they should. So I tell you one thing, we will not be sorry when we're finished. This is really what the wear down to. And once you get down to that point, well, there's a big differ and that one is not actually completely gone. I have seen them an awful lot worse, whether they be here, but so there's no point going on any further with them. Oh so here are some all of the blades. Hmm. And uh, but we might this. recycle these maybe and uh, give them back to where they came from. But yeah, it's been just one of those years where a lot of bolts, a lot of blades. Moats, washers. Moats and, moats and washers, everything here. <laughs> but uh, he's still happy I had at the minute. Oh yeah. And maybe that's just for the camera, Marco, is it? No, no, no. no. Oh, it's okay. He's okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. It's nice, right? Yeah, it's nice weather, that's the difference. In at the workshop, we have our Scanstone bed tiller. Uh, came up with an issue the other day. PTO started to slip, clutch packs mm -hmm. were slipping, went to tighten them and we had no real adjustment left to the, in them. So we took the PTO clutch off it and what did we find? Only these cracked plates. Now that one is completely worn. This one, Mick, I'm not just so quite sure. There doesn't seem to be much. No, I think there's one gone over as well. Oh, there's one completely gone? Yeah, because right. we were short of plate. Now there was one good one in it that actually had the part and we're still on it. Yeah, so, so we'll put it, that in as well. this is the machine we just bought this year just to give us an extra bit of a, um, mm -hmm. a push on. And we sent it to work, and yeah, it worked fine for probably a couple of days, and then all of a sudden, you know where it stopped. And the idea of the clutch bag is to oh, protect no, the tractor no. if anything slips, so I hit the stone around like that, at least the clutch will slip, the roller will slip, and then it'll, it'll reset itself. Huh? But when yeah. we went to adjust them, and went to tighten them, we had no more adjustment left, and that's why we had to take it asunder. And like, these are more old style than, than the new type ones. The new type ones have little uh, clutches on them that will reset themselves. <laughs> But this is the old old type it? one. So Caleb and Mick have taken this on. Oh, what make is that? Touch on it. Weasler. 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 So generally with these, if you're starting up the year, you would you would slacken them off, slip them, and then tighten them back up. But there was no there was no adjustment Weasler. left on it. So what is the when you're putting a new place there, Mick, what do you do? One second. He's not even listening to me. Yet. No, I would rather let go there for a second. Um, basically, all, all the plate, the steel parts, this one was slipping, so you get glazing on the steel parts. Yeah. And if you put it back together, it's like in, on a car, if you hit the brakes and you get brake fading, you have no grip. So you deglaze, cut the surface of the plates again, did all that on the steel plates, new discs, give the one I use a rope just to get it. And that was it. Should be good enough for that. Well, we'll find out soon enough. So, and if it does slip, do you just. Adjust it up and Go back on. it off then. 
a turn or two? What I did is I tightened it almost coil bound and I put a feeder blade in. I think I'd point one of a mil yeah. of a gap between the coils. Because I can't get any, I was YouTubing a good one, I was getting American stuff with it. Yeah, so that was really a no further on. No. So we've, we've tightened it up, we've backed it off, and going to bring it to work. Caleb is going to head off right now, and <laughs> hopefully that should be. Over there. See what it's like. Should be good to go. Yeah. Let's do it over there. So now it's time for tips and tricks. Tips and tricks. So this week's tips and tricks, if you are stuck for an inside ring spacer on the rotor area, here, yeah, as we can see Mark was putting it together, is to cut the old blade and to make a space around it because it has this exact same holes in it. And it will fit in between these two rings here and we can drop in the spacer and that will act as the ring. Now, obviously, if you had a new ring to put on it, you can put a new ring in it as well. Yeah. But if you didn't have one, and maybe you had to have one in the workshop or one in, st in stock, you could just cut your blades, use that as a spacer. Yep. Happy okay. days. Happy days. So that's it for this week's Workshop Wednesday. Don't forget to like, subscribe to the videos. They are free. You will get a notification when they come through. Yeah. So from everyone here at Finnegan's Farm, we talk to you all next Wednesday.